All right. Mic check, mic check. More Masters podcast. Just made, of course. Um, I'm back with another episode. I've been trying to hit y'all with a few episodes this week because I don't, ain't no telling if next week going to be busy or not. So I try to hit y'all a lot this week. Um, this episode actually came up through um, someone who was interested in learning more about the podcast by myself. And uh, I'll get into that in a second. First and foremost, I want to thank all the supporters, all the listeners, anybody who shared the podcast. Um, I got some new followers. And again, it's a lot of them from South Carolina. So shout out to to, to South Carolina, of course. Um, I ain't going to joke out this time. Uh, I just put an episode out a little while ago. Um, I know it'll be it'll be popping up on on a, on a YouTube feed soon. It's, I premiered it, uh, Mr. Uh, J. Paul, the Demi God uh, episode. He's a director, musician, owns like two or three studios in Augusta. So if you're an artist or a musician or somebody looking for photo shoots and you need scenery, backgrounds, um, stage things like that, watch the episode. It's really dope. I learned a lot about him. Um, a true hustler, man. But very, very good at putting his content out about his business. And I, I think that one's going to need a part two because there's a lot of questions I didn't get to ask that I wish I did ask. So um, I'll get to that in just a second, though. Uh, so go support that. Still got the Arts and Hearts episode. I, I, I like the episode a lot. Um, it's, it's being received well. For anybody who didn't see any other episode I put out, I'm going to start putting those episodes out um, uh, in, in spurts of five, five minutes, hopefully six minutes, something like that. Um because uh, you, uh, Facebook took away the premiere, so I can't premiere it no more. So um, I'll try to put it out in parts. All these parts I feel like are important or special or just engaging enough to want a person to go watch the full episode. So um, there's that. But I ain't going to spend too much time on the intro because I got a few questions I want to get answered. And ain't no time how long it's going to take. I'm a long-winded person when it comes to this type of stuff. So um, what I first want to say is shout out to all the supporters, all the all, all the, all the listeners. Um, week in, week out, I always get uh, a massive amount of support, whether it's a new new support, whether it's the same support. Um, sometimes it's people I don't, I don't know at all from nowhere. You know what I'm saying? Sometimes people I do know. Um, yeah, I typically, I, I try to gain them. I try to gain viewers and, and listeners um, one by one. I've always always been that way one by one to me is the best way so it's dope when i i, I ask people to engage and, and, or just try to uh make you guys feel like y'all are a part of the podcast and and and, and the illustrations of the pictures we're trying to paint when it comes to more than the masters i think that uh i, I just i don't know i just I, I can't i get overwhelmed with the amount of support that i'm giving or that i, I get you know so shout out to y'all for that with that being said um so I was asked, did I have a About Me podcast? Now, here's the thing with that. I have, uh, I think I got a few About Me podcasts, right? And, hey, can you see that Apple? This is a Mac. I just want to throw it out there real quick, you know. But um, I spend a lot of money on that Mac, so I'm trying to tell you. Every time I can tell you I got a MacBook, I'm going to tell you I got a MacBook. But um, best investment I made uh, all year. So uh, I got a bunch of About Me episodes. And the thing is this, right? They change so much because things change so much. So whereas I might had a, I might have had one in 2016, but now it's 2022. So in 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 those uh, six years, things have changed. I might have had one last year, but from last year to this year, I've grown. Things change. Things happen. Answers mean mean more now. Answers are gonna be different now. Things just change because as as a person, you just constantly uh, changing and going through things. And the way I view uh, things are changing as well, so I always try to get an updated about me. So anytime somebody asks me about it, and, and this is like, um, I'm trying not to be too long with this five minutes already. This is like, um, I think you can see that if you anybody that's been following me since the beginning, you can see that I've always done that. Whether it's one person, whether it's a bunch of people, I say send me the questions, I go and answer them, and I, I go answer. I've been doing that since since I was doing only audio. I've been doing this so. This is not new to do. It's a, after I like doing these because it makes me feel like I'm connecting with my audience more without having to put out content. It's, even though this is still content, so to speak, right? So uh, I sent. Uh, I had a few. It's not a few. It's actually pretty extensive amount of questions. But uh, I'm going ahead and going to answer a lot of them. Um, I'll read all of them. Some of them I won't answer just because uh, I may not have an answer for it. I did skim over them, but I didn't skim over every single one of them. So. Before I get to the question, though, real quick, I do think that we have to ban certain people from um, posting pictures of their food because 
I think sometimes people post people post pictures of their food, and then I'll see y'all complaining or um, upset about your partner and this that, and third. And then I look at the food and I say, well, how can that partner be happy? And this is men and women. I don't I don't care. Like I just think we have to ban certain people from posting their food. And then also in the likes, ugh. Y'all be like, like, love. And I'm like, it's no way you like and love and heart and, and, and that fool. I'm looking at the same place you're looking at. I'm sorry. It says age. It's the first question. It says age. Uh, I am 31. So I'll be 32 in October. Um, that's the first question. Pretty easy question, right? The next question says uh, three words that describe you as a person. And this is what I want to do. I want to skip that question and wait to the end. I want to skip that question. So it says, uh, started podcasting when and why? Um, I started podcasting in 2016. And the why was just because, well, at the time it wasn't a thing. It wasn't a thing. It was something that nobody really was doing. It was being done. Don't get me wrong. It was being done. But it wasn't as popular as it is now. When, when, when you said podcast back then, nine times out of ten, somebody said, what is that? And you either said a radio show, which is which is, which is not, or you said an audio file. When you looked up, when I looked up the definition of podcasting in 2016, because, excuse me, when I did it, people already started to ask me, you know, what it, what's that, what's that, what's that? And I'm like, it's an audio file, so it's just you just talking and you put it out. The dope thing about that was I had already been in media for some time, and I, I felt like um, I loved being, I knew I loved being in media and just the arts, the digital world, just didn't know exactly what I wanted to do. I would talk about topics. I would do this. I would do that, and I would get a good, good, uh, a good amount of feedback from it. You know, from 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 a core audience of course. But this is the, obviously the, the most. This is the biggest. I, I've. This is the this is the most attention I've gotten for any of my media work um, doing the podcast. So it was just something to do. Um, and I like, I like, I like, I like the conversation. I felt like I could, I, I, I make good conversation with people. I worked at a place at a time where, um, I would talk to people, just ask them two, three questions. And sometimes I would get like a life story from them, which I didn't mind because like I worked around at the time, a lot of interesting people who had interesting backgrounds. And I thought that was dope. I'm like, yo, this person was a model. This person was this, this person was that, you know, I'm gonna say I'm, this wasn't dope, but I know somebody was saying like there was a model in that their husband was jealous and he used to be and he used to beat on her and he had to leave and this told me the whole life story in about seven minutes. It's not dope that she got beat up, no, but th- it was dope to hear that she was a model and all that type of stuff before she started working at where we worked at, you know. Um, <clears throat> so that was why, like that was why having those conversations and then knowing that I wanted to be in media and I felt like podcasting was a good avenue to take and uh, it didn't blossom. Like everybody started doing it. It was a really, really, really good thing. So do you consider podcasting a hobby or a job? Um, it's not a job. I can tell you that. A job to me is a place you go in because you have to make money. It's just that simple, right? It's something you're doing because you have to make money. That's what I. That's what I would. That's what I would describe a job as. I don't think nobody necessarily necessarily wants to have a job. I think people just have them to survive and and just to you know meet the uh, requirements of life. Uh, this is more like a, a hobby. I would love for it to be a career because I don't feel like this is work. Right, right now the time is ten o two p.m. and um. I've been up all day, like always, and I have no problem coming up here, setting up and, and doing the podcast. I love to do this. So um, it's more of a hobby because I love doing it. Like basketball, like you have, you'll see a kid wake up at 6 in the morning, go play, play again at 9, play again at 10, play again at 1, and he's playing all day. And it's not – he's tired, yes, but they're not getting tired from not wanting to play. They're getting tired they keep playing, but they keep doing it because they love it. And I love doing this, so – um, I would look at it as a hobby, but I would definitely love for this to be a career um, if if I could. I think right now, I mean, what I make at work, I would I would, I'm not going too low now. I would take I would take a ten thousand dollar pay cut to do this instead of doing what I do. I think I think so. That's just me. Um, is podcasting expensive? And I'm, I'm gonna read two questions at once because 
one is a simple 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 answer is podcasting expensive and how do you balance work life home life podcasting life so is podcasting expensive now no when i first started i just had this conversation last night with um jazz um dj uh, j paul and you know we we mentioned how this mixer um the microphone so yeah we mentioned this mixer this microphone this stands all this stuff right before podcasting became a big thing you had to buy this stuff one by one it wasn't no bundle deals it wasn't no bundle deal where hey get the audio interface you get the the mixer uh, you get a microphone with it, some headphones with it. No, you had to get studio headphones. You had to you had to get these XLR cords one by one. The mics one by one. This came with you know the USB and and and, and it came with the uh, the power cord. But you had to buy stuff one by one. So yeah, it was more expensive back then. Um, as opposed to now, you could probably spend about three hundred dollars. I say four hundred dollars, and you have really really good sounding equipment. Just for starting out. Now, mind you, when you start making money and you start to, um, you know, get uh, deals or you start to uh, get sponsorships and stuff like that, then you can up, you know, up up your your, your equipment and, 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 and go crazy. But, yeah, man, our podcast is not expensive, but it, it, it used to be, it used to cost more, but it's never been quote unquote expensive. Now, it might be now if you're trying to get a camera, a light, light yeah, all that stuff. So I'm, if, I'm, if I'm counting this stuff here, um, when I bought this, I think this was like two ninety nine at the time. I bought it in twenty sixteen, had it for a long time. So I say three hundred dollars. Uh, I bought four of these mics a piece. These was uh one hundred one hundred a piece. I think I'm, I don't know for sure. I think hundred a piece. So that's four hundred. I got four of these, but I got other mics. Let's just say this though. Let's just, let's use what's here. Three hundred, one hundred. I bought these in packs of four, but I don't know how much this was. So I'm gonna say twenty five. <laughs> so one twenty five. This is uh three hundred. That's four twenty five. That camera right there was five, so that's nine twenty-five. The lens was uh three hundred, so that's twelve uh twenty-five. This was I don't want to say the price, um I don't want to say the price on this, but you're looking at about uh close to four, close to close to close to close to, close to four thousand, I guess something like that between three and four thousand. So um. I don't know if that answers the question whether it's expensive or not, but what I'm saying is, for me, I've been doing it for a little minute, so I didn't buy all this at one time. I bought it in spurts. You know, I bought this when I first started years ago. Then I bought mics. I always been pretty good with mics, so you know, I feel like I didn't need this one. I just wanted it. It was one of them things where, like I said, you start to do stuff for a longer time. You want to improve your sound and improve your um your quality of, of everything you're doing so over time i just bought more stuff but this wasn't a necessity my sound always been pretty pretty decent um since i started knowing what i was doing um the camera i bought separate isolated um like isolated event than this i bought this year so it wasn't like i went in there one time and said hey you know run it up no it wasn't like that over time i just wanted to get better and get uh and try different things like i said i didn't always do i didn't always do visual so um, hopefully that answers the question. How do you balance work life, home life, podcast, and life? Really, I don't. Well, I do, but it's no, it's it's no real way. You can't. You just gotta be able to balance. Like so, in a lot of these questions, I'm I'm asked. I'm a, I'm answering. I'm gonna say this. I never said this. In, I never said this any other time. But like, what I do for work and where I work, why? That's why I don't like shit on it so much. Is because. It's it, it's taught it's taught me so much that I wouldn't have known um, had I worked there, right? So when you say balancing, like what I did at work for uh, uh, like about three or four years was balance. I had to uh, it was time management. I was uh, in charge of uh, a certain amount of people, and I had to make sure that from at least from my sh- just for the day, but from my shift that I had uh, coverage in certain areas by certain times. So. You planning lunches, you planning ahead, you planning this, like, okay, cool. The person not here. Can we get the person to fill in? Like doing all them types of things, it helped me um as far as balancing in life in general because you know, I may have to do a podcast at seven PM. I may work and I work in, in Aiken, so I may work across forty forty five minutes away and I'm working five um AM to about five PM. So now I gotta squeeze in 
Okay, do I squeeze in, in them two hours? How do I manage that? So we know 45 minutes of is me coming home. Do I, you know, uh, see the, see my kids for a little bit? Do I go rest for a second? Do I just come straight to the studio, set up? Um, so that's that's kind of what I do. Like that that part of my life has taught me how to manage through here. And I noticed that um, an hour with my my daughters is is better than not seeing them at all, right? Um, then also me have thank God that they are thank God they well behaved kids. I can always bring them here so that hour can turn into two three hours. Um, I'm around them, so it's not hard to to balance the work life and, and, and home life and podcast life, but it's tough, especially now with me being like a salary um, member of management because that's like slavery. It's not, but I, but I'm saying it's like you there a lot, and it's like oh well, you know. Um, so you got to kind of balance uh, that too far. Like, okay, I'm gonna be here for 12 hours today. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So half the day is gone. It's all to that that work. You know, I got about five hours outside of that. So how do I break that five up is, is, is the biggest challenge. And I don't have to record every single day. And then also, you utilizing the time when you're off. So, like, now I'm off. So trying to record in that in that time span or doing something late night, 8 o'clock, 8.30, where I can have that time to uh, to prepare for the, my guests, my interviews, but also see my daughters and also, you know, take care uh, of home duties and things of that nature. So it's definitely tough. That's why I balance it like that. I just, that's, my job is balance. Like my job is to, to is to, is to fix issues and, and, and balance and, and, and manage time and, and, and manage people and manage situations. So um, it's not really hard for me to do it outside of work um, athlete doing it outside of work is 10 times easier than doing it inside of work for me. So, um, the hardest part about all that is just working. It's the work part, but everything outside of it is easy, especially now because I record in the evening. So typically, um, if I'm not closing, you know, I got time to come here. If I get up at seven, I can just scoot over here. I'll be here at eight, eight thirty, and I can record a podcast. And I, I think that, um, I give myself a pat in the back. I do a okay job of at least, um, preparing for my guests uh, hours and, and days in advance, so I'm not really rushing and giving them a half half ass interview or half ass attention or a half ass version of myself. Um, when when we do link up and, and, and you know we do them things, so yeah, man, uh, that that's what I would say I do a great job balancing it. Though. That's how I balance it. Though, like you just gotta you gotta make a plan, and that's one thing I I said the other day on, on Facebook. I was like, um, if I see the vision, I'm gonna execute. And it's always me. If I could, if I see a vision, I'm gonna execute it. So if I feel like, you know, damn, I'm gonna do five podcasts today, but I'm working five every day. Then I'm gonna make a plan somehow, some way to where I could finagle that time to to be available for those guests. And uh, sometimes you get lucky. Sometimes the guests be like, I can't make it today. And deep down, even though I might be upset, deep down, I'm like, oh, thank God, cause I wasn't in the mood. So it just depends. Uh. Why should people listen to your podcast? What makes you stand out from the rest or from the others? Um, they really shouldn't, though. Like, I would say my podcast is probably the worst in the city. So, um, no, I'm playing. Uh, I, I think that uh, people should listen to it if they're interested in, in, in good conversation um, and if they're interested in what Augusta has to offer and if they're interested in what... Um, I be thinking because I'm thinking I'll just be thinking, me talking. Um, but if it's it's just something to do, I think it's it's it's, it's good content. I think that it's, um it's real intellectual at times. It's funny at times. It's entertaining at times. Um, I do do a lot of heartfelt uh content sometimes. Sometimes you might just relate to it. And I think that's why I think it's it's real relatable because um I know what the city embodies, and I think that my my podcast embodies the city. You know, I feel like when you listen to it, you know, you get um, depending on on, on, on on who the guest is, you get a certain feeling from you're going to get a feeling from Augusta regardless. But you get a certain feeling from Augusta depending on who I got on. I might have somebody that's real hood on, somebody that's real educated on, somebody that's um, real cultured on, somebody that's not cultured at on. So you'll get all of them kind of mixed feelings um, on the podcast and uh as far as like how I stand out, you know, honestly, I just do my own thing. Like I, I try not to take nobody format. I try to do my own thing. I'm, I'm real interview based, but I do the thinking out loud. So like that's something that people liked. And I noticed that I would do it when um 
I would do that when, because you, you don't want to be guest driven too much. So I try to stand out by, I, yeah, I, I'm, I build my, my my following and my platform on guests, but I'm also, I also embody Augusta enough as well to show you what more than masters is if I just talk to him myself. Like this is more than masters as well, right? And I think that, uh, I think that, can I say that? Yeah, I think that you know when when you interviewing, uh, that's that's just one side of things, you know what I'm saying. But then when you talking out loud and just to the camera yourself, like not too many people from from here do that. And uh, I'm trying to use my words wildly, so I think I'm I'm dissing them. And um, it's just something that I like to do, and then it, it caught fire. Like, but I always do that, even I did audio. When I did audio, I would do these things, and anybody can attest to this that been following the platform. Um, I always did these things where I would tell a story. So I had these, I had things like um, the Wonder Years, which is my favorite show, one of my favorite shows to me. So I would give you a story of my life when I was younger, like a long, drawn out story. So that story could be an hour. I'm telling you a story, and and, and taking me an hour. I'm giving you detail, detail, breakdown, breakdown, breakdown description of this person backstory of that person i'm giving you all that stuff and i've always done that and i think that um that, that's what set me apart the fact that i, I can not only give you uh, a dope interview or give you a dope conversation with a guest but i can also sit in front of the camera myself and just go and it'd be just as entertaining if not more just as uh heartfelt if not more and just as touching if not more so I think uh, that's some of the things that, or at least one of the things that made me stand out is just that I do things my way. I do things my way. Um, it's no real wrong reason to a lot of things I'm doing, but I do things in themes as well. So I'm going to try to catch you one way or the other. If it's not, and if you don't like, if you don't like interviews, you like thinking aloud. If you like thinking aloud, you'll like uh, the conversation pieces, which I've been doing with the, um, the, um, scar, the scar. But I also, I think one thing I do that I can't say others don't, because I, I don't really know. But one thing that I do is um I I definitely let my life um help with the podcast. So when you think about how I'm not gonna get into it, when you think about how Scarred came about, that little series I'm doing right now, when you think about thinking out loud how that came about, it always came from something going on in, in, in my life and and I started something and then boom, it just started from there. You know? Even when I I'll, I'll give you a I'll give y'all a good nugget and um I don't think people notice like it was a time where I was when I would do my podcast about 2017 2018 2019 I can't remember but I would do my podcast at the time and I was talking I was I was involved with someone right and I would talk for like 45 minutes an hour myself there's no guests just nothing just talking it's like and I'm really talking to the person through the podcast, right, and 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 like, at least I felt like in my way, it's my way of like, because they say men don't open up, you know, guys open up, but here I am talking about 60 minutes, an hour, just raw feeling, uncut, you can't even, you couldn't even uh, 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 interfere, so like, imagine that, like, you saying, oh, you don't talk, you don't communicate, I'm giving you an hour of audio, this is how I feel, this is what I think about this, right, and, you know, like even those help me to do what I'm doing now. You know what I'm saying? As far as like just thinking and speaking, speaking my mind. So a lot of times I may not, if anybody know me, I may not be as vocal um, in, in in person or with certain situations. But if you if I got this, I've always been vocal. So nobody can ever tell you I don't communicate because I'm gonna make it be known here, like how I feel with by anything. Damn near. So that's another thing. I think um, I'm so personable. Sometimes and, and vulnerable. Sometimes on a microphone that I feel like some people aren't, and I don't. I can't speak for sure. I can't speak for everybody, but I know for me, that's one of the things I did. It didn't do no good though, because like a lot, of, <laughs> a lot of times you, I talk for that hour with some change, whatever. And you know, when you talk to somebody, they, they you, you'll talk for an hour and they hear what they want to hear. So it's like, yeah, it's whatever. But uh, that's neither here nor there. Um, at any point, did you ever get discouraged? with podcasting if so what kept you going um i've never been discouraged with podcasting um i I, i've learned lessons through podcasting but i never i've never been down like not one time um now i've i've been, been been critical of myself 
I'll say that. But far as like being down or discouraged, oh heck no. Like I've always I love doing this. Like this is this is this is it. Like it's almost like like with basketball, like you know, you may have a slump when you're not making shots or you just I ain't gonna get into that. You may have a slump when you're not making shots and stuff, right? You go to the court and you practice and you just you, you work by yourself. I remember one time I was playing basketball when I was younger. I had just came back to, to Butler my, my my senior year, I think. And I, I I felt like I was always nice, right? And what happened was I don't know if I don't know what it was, but I was in a slump. I was in a slump. So like I wouldn't even get picked up and pee. I'm like, why, why am I getting picked up and pee? Like, so I had to like really reevaluate myself and go down and play with the scrub. You know, when you're playing ball in a court. It's always one good side, and it's like it's the real good side, and then it's the side that anybody can play on. I ain't gonna say they scrub, but they're just not on the good side. I had to go down in and, and get right and come back. And when I came back, I started busting ass, but I wasn't even discouraged then. I just went back and, and, and did what I had to do. So, like, it's so funny how life helped you with certain things in life. Cause, like, me playing sports, I never got discouraged. I feel like practice made perfect. So, you just keep getting better and better. So, whether it's like listens or the amount of listens, um, the content, the feedback I'm getting, I, I always try to do different things to make sure that um, I get different results. So if I want more engagements, I do things like this for the engagement. So send me questions. I want to answer them. Send me feedback on the podcast. I'm read your podcast. I'm read your feedback on the podcast. Like I've always done that. So I've always tried to uh, make sure that I don't get no type of discouragement because I don't care if I get five listens from five people and them five people comment and them five people send me questions like that's good enough that's a that's a whole community you know a lot of people can't even get five comments on a song which is two minutes i'm putting out hours of material sometimes and i'm getting feedback and stuff so now nah, i've never i've never um got discouraged but i've, I've been critical of myself and I, I've, I've evaluated myself and it felt like i can do i can do this just the other day just yesterday i, I got told it was like you know uh <laughs> You know, sometimes when you interviewing, you know, I, well, I think when I interviewed a guy from Arts and the Hearts, um, she was like, you know, you kind of was cutting them off here and there. And that was a that was in the beginning. That was something I, I really struggled with. I struggled with uh, letting the guests talk without cutting them off because so so often you want to get your questions out. You know what I'm saying? Like I had to learn to sit back, let the conversation flow. Ken Macon told me, hey, when you when you when you want to ask that question, write it down. And then so you don't forget about it. And then after they finish talking, keep keep the conversation going smoothly, but then write it down and then um then say it later on, ask them later on. So yeah, I'm always critical of myself, but I'm discouraged now. I've never been discouraged. I always just try to make results. I don't I don't I don't have excuses. I don't make them when it comes to the podcast. Like, no, I don't get discouraged. Um what keep me going, I love doing it. Like I just love it. I love the feedback I get. It's nothing like the best part about a podcast for me. I love doing it. I love preparing for it. I love being in the podcast, like right now in the moment. I love the post production of it. But the best part is when I get that email that I got a YouTube comment or that I got them Facebook likes and they sharing it and they saying stuff. That is the best part, and that's what keep me going every single time. So as long as I keep getting the feedback and the shares and the support from the community, um, I don't think I can ever be discouraged. When it comes to podcasting. Yeah, I don't think so. Let me get some water. It's not water, but I'm going to say it's water. It's black water. Another thing I got to stop doing, too. You got to stop posting stuff on your, on, your, on, your, on, your, on, your, on your timeline. And then saying, man, go check my story to, for, the, for the details. No, I'm not checking your story for the details. No. Either put it all on your public timeline or, or leave me out of it. Like, don't piss me off. Like, let's get back to the questions. I'm sorry. Okay. Oh, okay, cool. Who is your hero? Who do you look up to? Um, my family, you know, the, my loved ones. Um, I got a bunch, but just an odd name one. I never I haven't named um, to nobody yet. Uh, one of my heroes is my aunt, my aunt Nisi. Uh Definitely, like, one of my, my biggest inspirations always pushed me to do better. And when I say, like, I, I be critical of myself, it's people like her or a person like her that uh, that allows me to be critical or that, that forces me to be critical of myself because I'm so, um, I'm so worried about uh, making them proud, making her proud, you know. Uh, I give a backstory real quick, you know. I knew that 
parenting was going to be a, a, um, a very, very, very serious deal because when I found out I was having um, Brooke, my first child, that was the only person I called, but I felt like I didn't want to call because I just knew. You know what I'm saying? That's that's the person I called and like reality said, like, damn, this is... And even her response was just like, Oof. You know, like she wasn't mad, mad, but it was just like, yo, this is, this, it, it let me know it was serious, but her opinion, I value it so much, and uh, I value so, I, I applaud so much that she's done, even the silent things she's done, she, and that, she's done so much that, 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 that goes unspoken, that you gotta, you gotta applaud, because she can speak about it all the time, but she just don't, you know what, if I had to, if I, <laughs> If I had, I'm not comparing her to this person, but when I think of the, when I try to make comparisons and talk about things, you know, in Soul Food, you got the, you got the sister who was like uh, financially right, you know, um, head on, um, about a business. That's what I think of when I think of my aunt without the throwing in the face that I did this, I did that, I did that, without all that, you know what I'm saying? And I look, I like that because one thing about her that I admire the most is discipline, like the discipline. Like her, like her broke is not broke, broke, regardless of how she say, it, you know what I'm saying? Her broke ain't broke, broke, but it's just, it's discipline broke. Like I ain't broke, but I ain't got it right now. Cause discipline is telling me I don't have it right now. And, um, I look up to her for that, man. Cause I'm not going to lie. When I want long horns, I'm getting long horns. Like, <laughs> I'm sorry, but I, I look up to her. Like, and I wish that that's one trait I wish I can take from her is like the discipline, um, the, 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 the financial, uh, knowledge and, um, just, just, just those, just those things that, that she, that she uh, embodies. I like, I like those qualities of her, but man, man, my aunt is definitely my hero, man. I remember one time, just real quick. I remember one time, um, things was really bad, you know, at one point, and I don't want to get into it too, too much, but things was bad at one point, And I don't know if she did it because of this, because my aunt always did stuff for me all the time all the time and it was 2005 yeah it was 20, 2005 and she took me to go see ray we went to go see ray in brooklyn we went to go see ray at core street movie theater we went to go see ray and from there we went and got some pizza we got some food and then afterwards she bought me these these uh these uptowns uh Nikes Air Force ones that y'all would call I don't know, um they was black suede with the white check and it was like the the thing everybody had you know what I'm saying, and it wasn't because she bought them that that day was it meant a lot to me it's just the fact that everything that was going on for at least my immediate family at the time like my dad and all that stuff that was going on that meant a lot because you know it 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 it, it kind of like um. It allows you not to see certain things or to not feel certain things or feel a certain way about certain situations. I felt like, you know, I got I got her. I got I'm here for you. You know what I'm saying? And um, yeah, shout out to my aunt, man. I love my aunt to death. I ain't gonna get too much into it because that's too emotional. Um What would you change about yourself? Can't say nothing. Okay. Um nada. Nah. Uh what would I change about myself? I mean, I think at times I could be uh, too calm. I think that I could be too calm at, at times, um, too too laid back, too passive sometimes. Uh, I'm growing out of that, though. I've, I've definitely grown out of that. But I would change that about myself. I think that, um, and I, I'm hoping that's what you're asking. I don't know if you mean like a situation or I don't know. But if you talk about just myself as, a, as, a, as an entity, as a person, as a human, yeah, I would change how passive I am in certain situations. Sometimes... I think I do need to like uh, spaz out, but I just don't. I'm just not. I, I I'm big on like I don't like people feeling like they got one up on me, right? And I feel like sometimes when you lash out, you lose. I feel like when you lash out, you lose. Sometimes like you lashing out for what? It ain't gonna change nothing. And I feel like sometimes when you lash out, you lose. So if it was me, um, but if I could change one thing about me, I would definitely change the fact that I'm passive in some situations I'm, and i'm nonchalant and that's not always the best thing to be because like it's times that like it's times where i've me being so nonchalant has deep down i think i've, I've convinced myself that i don't feel no way about something or that i'm not hurt about this or that i'm not um 
that didn't hurt my feelings or that didn't make me feel less than, you know, because I'm so nonchalant. It's like I ain't thinking about it. It's like whatever. And I wish that um I could change that, I guess. But then again, sometimes that been my strength a lot of times too, not caring. And I'm able to get by certain things or just um, put certain things in the closet or mask it or just put it behind me and not ever address it again because it's not important. So uh, what's the next one? Uh, there's a lot of questions. Why do you eat pizza with no cheese? Who told you that? Nah. Uh, that answer is funny. It's not funny, but the answer is, is really... Um, Um, my grandma, my grandmother, um, she uh, she was the first person to to do that. I think she started to realize that uh, like I would, she would um, I like to talk to my grandma, man. Uh, she would um, so we would get the tombstone pizza. And stuff like that, you know, the pieces you get. And I'll always take the cheese off, right? I'll always take the cheese off, and I just have the sauce on it. I might add a little sauce, like if he has sauce in there, whatever, I might add sauce, but I'll always take the sauce off. And I think she started to realize that when I moved down here, mind you, I, before I came to came to Georgia to live, I, in New York, I always ate the piece with cheese because the, the cheese wasn't fake. I don't eat cheese, though, but the cheese didn't seem fake. Papa John's, um, Domino, all that stuff, the, the cheese is just don't, it's not... Italian cheese that I'm, I was used to and the sauce and all that like I'm big on I love Italian food pizza and spaghetti my top two things to eat so the sauce is like super important to me and uh, so yeah when I came down here I think she noticed that because I didn't start eating pizza like that to 2006 I moved down here oh six I think yeah something like that so I hadn't been here long and my grandmother she just quickly picked that up and then one day um <laughs> One day she, I, we lived in uh we lived in Salem Arms at the, oh no I'm sorry I lived in Pine Walk at the time I lived in Pine Walk and we had just moved to our house maybe like a month and she dropped by um she dropped by and she gave us some pizza she she brought some pizza to the house when my cousin stuff was over there to the um, apartment we was at and I had my own my own box and in that box it was a uh, sausage but it was no cheese she was like i ordered a piece with no cheese on it and i had never thought of thought of that i'm just like all right cool and i ate it and I remember like thinking like yo this this is amazing this is the, the best piece i ever had in my life at the time you know and um so that's why like it just started from there so um god bless you know rest in peace my grandma she passed away this year but um yeah that's why that's why uh, my grandma she did that you know she um she the reason why. If not, I would have been peeling it off and not eating it. Honestly. I always peeled it off little by little and just, you know, did it that way. But, um, yeah, shout out to my grandma for seeing that. That was dope, too, because, like, I hadn't been here that long. So, if I had to pick up on that and just think of doing that was amazing. And, you know, I never got to, I never, I don't think I ever got a chance to tell her, like, yo, I, I, I think I might have did. I might have did. I don't know. I don't know. We talked so much time. I don't know. But I don't want, I don't uh, I don't want to talk about that. Um, best and worst gift you ever received given um i don't know what the the the, the i don't want to talk about the best gift i ever given cuz i don't yeah i give I, I think i give out good gifts when i really feel like it um <laughs> whenever, whenever i put thought into something or like i just i don't know you can give good gifts depending on how you listen you know what i'm saying like people tell you what they want or stuff like that so you just got to let people talk the worst gift i ever received oh I'm gonna be honest with you, bro. I'm, I'm gonna tell you right now, and I wouldn't call it a gift, but this is the this is this is some that's I just like slapping the face. So one thing is given. My cousin, he had a uh, in New York, you get your report card around November, right? So he had a report card one year. And I guess he had got like some C's. I don't know, just passing grades, whatever. Right? Cool. So my my uncle and aunt from New Jersey, whatever. Um, they gave like hundred fifty dollars, like a to buy this, this jacket or something he wanted. All right, cool, dog. The next year, I'm thinking, like, I bet I'm bring my poker every year because they must not know how I give it up. And I had, like, all A's, right? This nigga gave me $2. And I was sick all night. Like, I remember I remember even him even asking me, like, yo, my name, my nickname is Boo Boo. He was like, yo, Boo, you, you, you don't want $2? And I'm thinking, like, no. 
That's not why I brought this here. Like, I didn't bring it here for $2. I gave $150 for C's. What is going on, you know? So that was probably my worst gift I ever got. And I don't know if that would be considered a gift or not, but I'm thinking I'm getting $150 at least. You know what I'm saying? I gave him $150 for C's. I'm bringing all A's. Like, come on, bro. $2? Just tell me you don't like me or you don't love me. Just tell me. You ain't got to give me money. Um, what do you like to do for fun besides recording a podcast? Playing basketball, uh, being with my kids, being with my family, uh, helping people. Um... Those are all fun things to me, man. Like I like, but I like playing basketball. I'm, I'm, I'm competitive, so I play ball still here and there. Not as big, not as good as I used to, or not as uh, I don't have the same endurance I used to have. Um, but yeah, I like to do that. I like to go out in the city uh, and just uh, be, be my, be to myself. I ain't gonna lie. One thing, the most fun thing I can do is just sit down and do nothing. Like I, I, I try to do it. But I can't because I'm, I'm a very demanded demanded person with certain things, whether it's work, whether it's family, whether it's my kid, you know, all that stuff. Like, I'm very demanded. So it's really hard to not do nothing. But the days I can just sit and do nothing, I, I, I like to do that. That seems fun to me, you know. But that's about it. I'm trying to think. Is there anything I like doing besides that? I, like to, I mean, I'm a joker. I like to joke and be, just have fun, bro. I, I, ain't gonna lie. I like to laugh and joke. I know I come up with serious a lot of times, especially at work. I do be serious there, but for the most part, I like to laugh and joke. I'm a, I'm a human being, but I like to laugh, joke, have fun. Um, life is short, you know what I'm saying? Uh, what are three of your pet peeves? Mm. I can tell you one, and I'm realizing now, I'm realizing that now that that's a pet peeve of mine. Some things you grow into, right? I don't like being questioned. Like I don't I don't know what it is about um me being questioned. It's the line I my whole mood will change if I start being questioned. It's not about anything in particular. You know what I'm saying? It's just like questioning something or like I don't it's it's a certain way you can question me that it, it really grinds my gears and it, it pisses me off. And it changes my whole mood because now like I could be in a, such a good mood, but somebody might ask me something and I don't know. I just, it's just something about feeling like I have to, or feeling like I'm in, I'm, I'm being put in a position to explain why, or something like that. Like I'm grown. I'm not explaining why to nobody. So uh, that's one. That's a pet peeve of mine. Um, for podcasting sense, a pet peeve of mine is um, canceling. I don't know. It's a pet peeve. Like it was at one point. If you cancel, you just want to come back on. Like now that I'm so busy. Sometimes canceling is a is a plus for you, but for the most part, canceling that that'll, that'll really do it on a day of on a day of cancel on a day of that'll do it for me. Like that's a pet peeve of mine. So that's two. Uh, pet peeve, a pet peeve, a pet peeve. Uh, um, I don't know. I, I, that's I don't. I got. I know. I'm pretty sure I got. I got I'm pretty sure I got more because I get annoyed very fairly quickly. Pet peeve, you know what? Somebody not not know when to shut up, like not just talking too much. Like early in the morning, like why are we why are we talking that early? It's seven a.m. Like I got five words for you, if that. And if I give you five, that's good because most times it's like, hey, how you doing? Good morning, type thing. Like talking early in the morning is a pet peeve for me. Like don't just let me wake up. Let's all wake up. You know what I'm saying? Like I don't care how long we've been up. We ain't really up. We ain't really. You know, a study shows you're not really up until about 9.30 p.m. anyway. I'm lying. A study don't show that. But it sounded good, right? So, like, 9.30 p.m., like, around that time when we can start having them conversations. But that's a pet peeve of mine. Talking too early in the morning, like, I don't want to talk, bro. If I'm talking to you early in the morning, I'm pissed about something. So, if I'm real vocal to you early in the morning, whether it's at work or whether it's... Anybody can tell you that. If I've ever been vocal in the morning, I'm probably pissed off. So, there's that for you about me uh what's the next one where do you see your show in two years um or podcast in two years uh i I just hopefully not in the same spot i just want to i want to progress i don't i can't tell you um in two years i want to be here be there but i would like to in a perfect world i would like to just be going full throttle podcasting and doing media only and and not do nothing else to be honest with you like i would be completely honest with you but um i do think one one hand 
wash the other sometimes. So me working, I do. I it helps to make a certain amount of money so that you can feed back into the podcast if need be, if whatever you're doing isn't generating enough uh, money for that. So um, I would say I do make small term goals. I try not to make too many long term goals because that could change. But I make small term goals and I would like to, um, at some point I always wanted to have a network too. So I, I did it for a little bit, but I want to get back to having other shows um, on a, my on my own network. Just have my own, like whether it's more than more than masters network and like I'm producing other people's show and they 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 kind of uploading directly to my platform. That would be dope to have, um, and I can handpick hosts, co-hosts, and shows and topics and stuff like that. Because a lot of topics I do want to touch on and talk about, but I can't do it just because I know it's not something I want to talk about. But I know people, I feel like, they'll they be good for this. They'll be good for that. They'll be good for that. So that's something I want to do um, at some point. So in two years, hopefully I can get that done, you know. Uh, do you think you will ever stop podcasting? Um, I can't see it right now. Never say never, you know what I'm saying? I always feel like just don't say never. I don't want to stop. I don't feel like I'm going to stop no time soon. But um you never know what the future holds for you. You know what I'm saying? My daughters are getting older. My 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 oldest is getting older, so it may be something that I might have, I might have to take a break because I want to focus on something she's doing. She like art. She is beautiful. I feel like she could be a model. Um, so I would definitely uh step back from all this to push um her, all, even my, all my youngest. You know, I'll push either one of them to um in the forefront. And I'll, I'll take a step back from all this stuff in a heartbeat. So if I, I say never say never because you never know. But as it stands right now, I I couldn't see myself stopping. It's just it's too therapeutic for me right now. It's therapeutic. Um, it's beautiful. Even this is therapeutic. Like getting stuff off through questions that you wouldn't normally have gotten off. It's it's therapeutic. So right now I don't see it, but um, anything can happen. Greatest accomplishment. A greatest accomplishment. I can't talk a little bit. So only thing I can't read. I can read, but. Sometimes my word be messing up because I, you know, I, I can't, I can't get the words out. So I might say it slow, real quick. Greatest accomplishment in life so far. Um, I want, I gotta get back to that. Describe your musical taste and three artists. Ooh. Okay. Uh. Oh shit. Crap. Ooh crap. Crap crap crap. Ooh. Ah. Uh, Okay, I need a baker. I need a baker. Drake. I need a baker. Drake. Damn. I need a baker. Drake. I'm going to say 50 Cent. Yeah. And I only say that because Anita Baker is my favorite. That's my favorite. That's my favorite. That's my baby. She speaks to me. All right. I love R and B. It just put me in the mood. R and B is amazing. But I love Anita Baker. Okay. That's why that's there. Drake. I'm a big Drake fan. Um, sing and rap. So you get best of both worlds with him. You get this a rap. I like. I like a certain kind of rap. I like that braggadocious rap, but I also like that confidence rap. But I also like that player type rap. Uh, lover boy type rap. And you get all that with him, and then he also sings. So Drake is like obviously the best of all worlds. And then 50, he's just a big inspiration, um, rap wise. Me, but I like gritty rap. I like rappers. When it comes to that kind of rap, like that gangster rap, that 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 um, tough, tough, you know, uh, uh, crime music rap, I prefer if the artist is actually living or have lived what they are talking about. And 50 embodies that wholeheartedly so that's why and and, and i think for me that that'd be my three that'd be my three musical taste 50 drake nita baker all right uh you're having a netflix and chill night pick three movies to watch it, it depends it really depends on because on, 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 netflix and chill could mean a bunch of things right in my next listen chilling with my my, my girls or with a a, a female friend or you know like i don't i don't know like you know somebody i'm talking to or my girl um it it it, it, it would have to vary um and it depends because i mean if i'm doing if i'm if i'm with my girl or a, a girl i'm talking to whatever 
uh, I don't know if we about to watch three movies. You know, I think maybe half, maybe one. You know, half one. Uh, activities then rewind and finish watching the afterwards or something like that if it's just um if it's really just a chill quote-unquote chill like nothing's happening type of thing i don't need three i just need one movie i mean i don't i don't know what we watch it don't nothing happens so it don't matter um and then if, it, if it's my daughter's probably something scary like a horror movie but if you're just asking i can tell you my like three top movies i like to watch is uh men's society of course i love juice you know, and depending on the type of person or the mood I'm in, I, I love uh, Rain On Me with Don Cheeto and Adam Sandler. That's uh, one of my favorite movies. Um, it's underrated, but Rain On Me would be um, a movie I watch. It's, it's, I like it. It. Uh, my dad, my pops, he, um, it, it reminded me of, of my pops. And I, I'm thinking of something and, and they always, it always bring me there. You know, I, I remember seeing that before I saw him because for a little while I didn't see my pop for like a long, long time. And I watched that movie in that time span of me not seeing him. I said, damn, I wonder if he go through stuff like this or if that's how he is because he had something similar to whatever that was going through, whatever that guy was going through in the movie. And um, I think it, it helped me when I finally did see him to uh, deal with him and handle him or whatever the case may be. So, yeah, I would say those. It depends. Every person will get a different version. So, like, it depends on how I view you. So, the movies ain't about me. It's more about how I view you. Um, what are you most grateful for? Ooh. I'm most grateful for the way I am received by people. And I say that because a lot of times I'm, I'm not approachable, but I am at the same time. And a lot of times people can come to me and tell me whether it's something critical, like, yo, you sagging your pants. I, I always say my pants, you sagging your pants, da da da. But you can come at me and, without me spazzing out on you, you know what I'm saying? And at the same time, in the same breath, you can come in and be like, yo, man, you amazing dad, you doing this that, and third. And I and I, I take it in just as much. So um, when I say when I'm received, I mean like uh, the fact that people can come, tell me about myself, whether it's good or bad. And um, I take that in, so like I, I'm grateful. For, I'm grateful for being able to take that in, like take the way I'm received and and, and and grow from it. Like I'll grow from it. If even if I, even if I don't respond, and I never want to spaz up. If I don't respond the way like that's open arms, I'm still gonna think about it later on, and I'm probably gonna um, try to adjust some things. If in my heart I feel like whatever the person said was justified. So, but I'm but. If it's just um, things I'm grateful for, I'm about to wrap this up. Um, I'm grateful for my, my my kids. I'm grateful for my kid's mom. You know, uh, I think that's important. I think a lot of times uh, when you have kids, to oh, make sure you got right, have them with the right person, like somebody who's gonna love them and care for them. It's just as much, if not more, than you. Um, I'm grateful for my whole every woman in my family. Uh, I'm grateful for the support system I got. I tell a story. I ain't gonna tell a story, but I'm I'm grateful for my sister, my brother, but my sister. I'm I'm very, I'm a, I'm just I don't know overwhelmed with gratefulness for her because uh, as a man, you know, especially me being busy and stuff like that, I feel like I I won't ever I won't ever be allowed to be as long as she around. I'll never be allowed to to be uh, regular or subpar, just making it or just getting by with them. I like, never like she want me to. I'm gonna always have to like be up here as when it comes to being a man, a father, or whatever. I have to be up here as long as she alive, and I know that she gonna make sure that because I've had examples of it. Um, so yeah, I'm grateful for my sister. I got a story I wanted to tell. And I'm gonna tell it real quick. When I was like ten, she um. I had graduated from fifth grade to be going to middle school and we went back home and I wasn't feeling well. I remember I haven't, I haven't thrown up since I was 10. I threw up, I threw up. And, um, I remember her cleaning it up. Mine, she, if I'm a 10, she's eight. She cleaned it up. She made me some, um, we didn't have nothing in the house at the time. Jesus Christ. I'm not trying to dish you mom, but we didn't have nothing in the house though. Uh, <laughs> she made me some, um, 
I'll, it was something in a can, like some uh, either uh, some vegetables, something like that. It was horrible, but but I said to say like, I don't know, like she's a different breed, bro. Like she is like the backbone of a family. So I'm grateful for her a lot because uh, that's part of the reason why I don't take no excuses. You know what I'm saying? So she was eight trying to take care of her older brother for whatever she thought was the was the idea to do. That's what she was going to do because that's how she is, right? Um, yeah, man, I got a bunch of stories like that about her, but like that's that's when I always think about lately. I've been thinking about that all the time. I don't know why it's been it's been on my mind to say something about it, and um, I just the time I can say it, you know. But yeah, shout out to my sister for doing that, man. It, it was it was I didn't eat it, but it's the last time I threw up. So whatever she did, it worked. I ain't threw up since I was ten years old. <laughs> Knock on whatever that is. Um, last question. It says, "What does success look like for you?" Um, happiness. I feel like it's just happiness, like being happy with whatever you're doing. It's not about money, although that is a good thing uh, to have if you have a lot of it. But success looks to me is just happiness and being able to uh, be happy in whatever you're doing. So you ask about the work-life balance, all that stuff. It's times where I'm ready to just stop work-life in general because I'm, I'm not happy. But with this, I'm always happy. Even if stuff go wrong, I'm happy because I can fix it. I can, I can redo this. I can... It's just so much with this that I love. I feel like this is successful because I'm happy doing this. If it's just the same 25 people watching every week, I feel successful with that to me. Success is just happiness to me. It's like doing something at a at a, at a high level or a level that you're competent with or you're happy with, you're satisfied with, and being happy. That's what success is like for me. Um, I don't have to be the best at something. Um I ain't got to be the, the most this or most that. I just got to be happy with whatever I'm doing and happy enough to continue to keep doing it and while staying happy. That's all I want to do. Like, and have fun. That's what success is like for me. Uh, that's what success looks like for me. I can't talk, bro. I told y'all. Um, it was one I, I think I skipped. When did I skip? When did I skip? When did I skip? I'm trying to get it because we ain't got much time left. Uh, three words. That describe you the person. That was one of them. And then greatest accomplishment in life so far. Um, that's one of them questions that you really gotta think about and you really gotta be like, damn, like, what what have I done? That's one of them questions you think about and you be like, Okay, I really I either I ain't did a lot in life or I got a long way to go. And when I think of that question, I feel like I got a long way to go. I mean, I, I've graduated college, um, graduated high school. Um, I think for me, one of the best accomplishments I can say, with with the exception of course being a dad and, and, and all that stuff, being a son and all that, I would say being a role model brother um, for my sister and brother, meaning like not uh, succumbing to all of the peer pressure in a negative sense. Um, and I'll go even further in saying, regardless of anything that I have done or been a part of, whether it's some knucklehead decisions I've done, I've done or whatever, or just my environment, um, not forcing to cause me, but my environment, being a product of my environment, um, I can say that I've never been arrested, never been arrested, um, never been to jail. So that's probably one of my biggest accomplishments because when you think of where I came from and I ain't here to talk about did this or did that. I don't, I don't get into all that stuff. But when you think about, um, when I think about where I came from, and a lot of the close call situations, even being from down here, um, my adulthood life, you know what I'm saying? Just doing the dumb decisions you make, um, it could happen like that for anybody. I've seen people get arrested that ain't did nothing, you know? And I've been able to go uh, 31, almost 32 years, hopefully, knock on whatever this is, 32 years of not being arrested. And um, that's a beautiful thing to me because... Um, I, it could easily be differently. I, I've, I've been so close to where it could easily be differently so many times, and, and it just hasn't for me. And I, I commend myself for that to never have um, a cop put me in handcuffs or nothing like that. Um, so that's probably one of my greatest, my greatest accomplishments. Uh, th- to end it off, you said uh, it says uh, three words that describe you as a person. This is what I would like if you gotten this far, listening to the listening to this, whatever. I would, I would, or comment back to me, text, snap, Facebook, email, YouTube, whatever, 
Instagram, whatever, however you give me feedback, give it to me. I would, I would, from this, I would want to hear from the audience or my listeners, the viewers, um, to describe me in three words as a person based on what you heard today. Based on what you heard today, describe me in three words. Um, I can't describe myself in three words. I would just say cool, calm, collected, but that's, that's a saying, you know what I'm saying? Um, and I'm not always calm. I mean, I'm calm, I'm calm for the most part, but I ain't always cool. I'm calm and collected, but I ain't always cool. So, um, I don't know. I don't know what three words I, I could use, but I would I would be curious as to at the hearing an hour of me talking or fifty five whatever minutes of me talking, um, what does the listener think when or if you listen to my thinking out loud, whatever you do, what does what do you guys uh describe me as in three words, right? If you know me. I mean, if you know the, the good me, the bad me, the ugly me, all that stuff, all the versions of me you can know. If you know me, um, I, I'm curious to know what three words y'all describe me as, and I'll even go read them. And maybe the next one I do, I'll I'll go through the words and see if 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 it, if it fit me. If it don't, if it, if it don't, if it do fit me, I'll say it. I don't know how I work. It depends on the feedback I get, but um, that's really about that, man. That's all the questions I believe. Hopefully, I ask all. Of them. I answer all of them. Before I get out of here, man, you know, make sure like the shirt. Um, it says "Minding My Black Owned Business." So if you're black owned business owner, I would love for you to buy this shirt. You know what I'm saying? I'm gonna definitely put the um link to the. I'm gonna put the the Facebook page and link and stuff in the comments, but I mean in the um in the description. All right, but definitely go to Design Lux. That's L U X Design Lux. You know what I'm saying? Shout out to her for making the shirt. Um also made my Warner Masters uh sweatshirts. Also made the Christmas um sweatshirts that um I had on last year. So, um go shop with her, man. Go shop with her. Support, 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 support. You got support. If you got a shirt you want me to wear, I will wear it. Just uh send it to me. I wear a large. I like this shirt. It made me feel like I'm bigger. I'm not going to lie. I've been hitting the um the the boxing bag lately so i feel like i'm bigger i know i ain't but i also gained some weight uh i'm 197 now which just i don't know i gained some weight so i don't know what it is but uh yeah i ain't gonna hold it too long i'm sorry that was kind of long i don't know if i, if I call it a thing out loud or about me i don't know uh i don't know but either way appreciate it uh give me feedback comment on the youtube send me questions send me topics send me guests um send me ideas of what Things you like, what you don't like, um, what are you trying to do? Am I too long winded? You know, if I study too much, let me know. Um, that's that, man. Stop posting bad food. Stop posting stuff on your timeline and then telling me to go see your story. I'm not going to see your story. I never watch your story, bro. Sis. Just put it in in, in the open like you've been doing. Like why why are we doing all that? All right, man. <laughs>